like now. Okay, so today's streams will be a short one. Yeah, hello everyone. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much a, a way of trying to get on the algorithm good side by making content that is, well, kind of um, right now very popular. In this case, it's the movie Oppenheimer and the movie Barbie. So I was watching the trailer and I thought this part of the menu or the title screen was very easy to recreate in Unreal. So if you haven't seen the trailer, I'm gonna press play. Four, three, Truman is. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, it's just a flashing title. But the flashes, because it resembles a Geiger counter, are actually a little bit random. And also, you can hear the Geiger, um, the Geiger sounds. What's it called? The Geiger. Counter clicks, there it is. So, I thought it was a fun project, especially because of it can really teach you a lot of, of UMG. So, this is what we are going to do. I'll go to Unreal and show you what I have done. So, hopefully, you can hear it. Should be able to. Yeah, so it's the title screen, has the flashes, and also has the sound. And it only took me maybe to get it right and to get the sounds, etc. Maybe 40 minutes. So we, And I was testing a lot of stuff, so for sure we can get it in even less time. But when I press enter... There it is, the Barbie, Barbenheimer logo, and if you look look closely, there are some sparkles in that Barbie logo, which is also done in UMG. Everything is being done in UMG. And uh, yeah, let's create this in, in this stream. Yeah, it, it really shouldn't take that long. So yeah, I'll I'll check the chat if you have any questions, I'll also answer it. Okay, so let's begin. Let's create a new map. An empty level. And I will save it. Save current level as. So this level, I'll create a new folder, call it a stream because I have already done it once. Okay, so the new map will be my title screen map or it can be main menu. I'll just call it title screen. Now I want something to show as a title screen so let me create a widget blueprint that it will be the widget blueprint that will house all of my of my text and if i had image assets then for sure i will get those too so yeah let's go to the user interface widget blueprint Let's call it Widget Blueprint uh, Title Screen. Let's open it. And inside it, it's the user interface of the UMG editor. UMG is Unreal Motion Graphics, and it's the way that we can add some user interface to our game. In our case, if we wanted some text, we can just drag and drop some text and here we have it the thing with doing this is that i cannot rearrange this text 
So if I want to simulate that I will have a screen before adding the text, I should also add a panel. So let's go to the panel category, a canvas panel, and now I can drag and drop a text inside it and I will be able to move it around. Now I want my text to be in the center, right? Because if you see my reference, the title is in the center. So here, let's go to the anchor. And I mean, we can put the text like roughly in the center. But the thing about this is that whenever my, uh, my viewport scales, there will be a point whenever it scales so much that it won't be in the center. You may not see this type of bug if you're just developing for maybe PC, but there are a lot of types of PC. You can see here like all the resolutions that are the most common ones. So you should want to anchor your text to a point inside the screen, wherever you will always know that it will be in the center. So that's why this is the anchor. And we can change it by clicking to any of these locations. And now if I hold Shift and Control, I will also update the position and alignment to match. So what does it, what this means, if I can align to a center, but you will see that my text is not actually moving places. But if I hold Shift and Control, now my text is following that anchoring. I mean, it's already following it, but it's also updating its position. I'm going to increase the size of this text to maybe 70. And in order for it to be in the center, if you see the constraints, the actual box constraint, it is in the center, but the text is too large. So let me increase that size by clicking in size to content. Now that bounding box, actually is around my text. So yeah, perfect. Yeah, so maybe a size of 70, yeah, it's perfect. Now let's put the actual text. And the actual text is Oppenheimer. And you will see that there is some spacing between the letters. You can achieve this by going to the text. And here there's some letter spacing. So a value of 450 should be fine. Now, I mean, it would be a good idea to show the text and to also to change the font. So let's first show the text. I'm going to go back to the map that I just created. It's an empty map. Let's go to this button, which is the blueprint one. And let's open the level blueprint. In the begin play, I'm going to create a widget. And I'm creating a widget because this is a widget blueprint. So I want to show it. So this is making my title screen be created. But in order to show it, I need to put it in my viewport. So I will add it to the viewport. Now, when I press play, I will see my text. And if for whatever reason I increase or scale my window, you will see that it stays on the center. Perfect. Now you will see that the font is not exactly the same, right? So to fix this, we just need to import a font. To import a font, you need to download the font. I look around the internet and the font that it gave me was called uh, that this title used is called Goth Gotham, I believe, Gotham Black, Gotham Bold, something like that. 
Gotham Bolt. Here it is. So you download it. Usually it's free. It's a good idea if you're going to use this project to maybe start getting some money. It's a good idea to see what type of license it's revolving the font because because it's easy to get in trouble if you don't buy the font. So whenever you have the font, it's just a matter of importing it. To import it, we can just drag and drop it. And fonts, font face import options, it will tell me if I want to create a new font asset using this font face. I'll click yes. And now you will see these two files, Gotham Bolt, the font face, and Gotham Bolt font, the actual font. With these two files created, and let me save everything, we can go to our text and we can change this font family. So I will select my font face. Oh, I will select, I will select my other file, the font. And this Gotham Bolt font, I'll click on the arrow to use it. So now, it should be a little bit more similar and everything here is in caps, so I should also do the same. Perfect. Now it's looking like the actual title screen. Now we have these numbers and you will see that the spacing is very symmetric, right? If I have my trusty snipping tool, you will see that for, for one, there is a space here. This, the actual center of the screen is somewhere around here. And there's also a space between the numbers. And it's following some kind of rule or ruler that here the 7 and the 23 are no uh, are not disregarding the actual size of the title so you can identify this type of of design patterns just by looking a little bit into the the title text Right, so we need to be very, very careful and try to respect this. So what I'm going to do is create the text for the numbers. And because the text will be underneath the actual title, what I can do is create a panel called vertical box. And I want that panel to be around my first text. So I'll just click on my text and I'll click wrap with vertical box. You will see that nothing happened in my designer viewport, right? But in my hier hierarchy panel, there is a vertical box now. And whenever I add a new text and I'm just going to duplicate this text, you will see that the center is being respected and inside this vertical box I can find the two texts. Well, that's good. Now let's try to add a space in between because, because yeah, that's there is a space in between like this one that we already determined. I could mess around with the padding, but I find it easier to go to the primitive primitive category and here in the spacer, I just need to drag and drop it inside my vertical box. Here's the spacer. Right now it has a value of one. So let's just change the value here in size in the details panel. We can change it to 60. And now with these arrows, we can move it 
where we need it. Now, inside of instead of just having Oppenheimer um, twice, we just need to put the numbers, which I believe was 19, uh, oh, 7, 21, 23. 7. Now, I need numbers that also are spaced evenly in the horizontal axis. So what I can do now is click on this text, right click on it, wrap with, and the same way that we created a vertical box, we can create a horizontal box. And now it's just a matter of duplicating the number and changing the value. 21, 23. So here, let's change it to 21. And you can see that there's some space in between the numbers and, and the actual example doesn't happen. So now let's just remove that letter spacing in all my numbers. Let's duplicate this one again. I'm using the short, shortcut control D and this should be 20. I need some space between these numbers, so again, I'll just drag and drop a spacer. I'll put the spacer where I need it, and I could play around the X size, but because I really don't know exactly how large is my screen or my viewport, what I can do is tell this spacer to try to occupy the most available space inside the actual component, which is right now a horizontal box. So with my spacer selected, I will go here to size and inside, instead of auto, I will click on fill. And fill will make it try to fill whatever space it has. This is very useful because if I duplicate the spacer, you will see that now the the two spacers are trying to share the space that they have available. So I can move the second spacer to the right. And now I have these numbers evenly spaced just by using the fill value. This is very useful to try to organize your UI. Now, just in case my, my map was not like completely black, I will try to create here inside the vertical box. I'll drag an image that will serve as a background image. And I didn't want to create it inside the vertical box. Just drag it on top of the canvas panel. Here it is in anchors. Hold shift control and click on this one. Now it's covering everything. I want to change the tint to black. And I want it to be in the background. So let's just drag and drop it, not on top of the vertical box, but just on top of it, <laughs> on top. just above it. And now I have like a um, black screen with the actual title on it. So let's press compile, let's save it. Let's press play. And here we have it, the title screen that I showed you, but we don't have any type of movement like in the demo that I, that I show you. I'll, I'll show it again if, if you just enter in the stream. Here is, no, that's not it. Where is my map? Here, this one. We're trying to recreate this. Because that's how it's, it appears in the movie. Three. Truman needs to know what's next. Whoa. Truman needs. Three. Truman needs. Four. There it is. Three. Truman needs. Yeah, so we need to have that, right? So we will be using some animations inside of the UMG editor. But before continuing with the animations, let me check if there are some questions in the chat. Add user interface to the channel. What's up, Yunev? I love the channel. 
Thank you very much. We are glad that you are finding it very useful. And yeah, let us know in the comments of this video or in the chat any type of topic that you would like us to, to cover. We have covered a lot of topics and you, if you haven't found them, well, we created a little website, well, a little space in our website called Game Dev Quest, where you can find most of our tutorials organized by topic. So, oh, let, I, let's see, I want to learn some materials and VFX. You can click on this button and it will show you the difficulty level and the content regarding materials, regarding uh, VFX, simulations, environments. We have a, a, some environment physics, game mechanics that n not that many people watch these videos. Um, it's always makes me a little bit sad that no one watch it, watches it, but you can find them. And the, all of this is free content because it's the content that we already have in our YouTube channel, but uh, sometimes they get buried. So yeah, if you want to find this, is unfgames.com quest. And if you're ready to have a, a deep dive on Unreal and want to create your own game, we also have this uh, course that we are selling. If you go to our webpage, UNF Games, you will find the action game course. And here's like everything we have learned, we have tried to con condense it in a single course where you can check out all the steps needed to complete the an actual game. Right now it's in early, in, in early access because we haven't actually finished the game yet. But uh, I have it right here. These are currently the modules that exist from the project creation, creating interactive components. In this case, the, the GIF shows a door. Character locomotion has to deal with the animations, animation blueprint, create an enemy, creates a simple enemy that moves towards you and you can attack it. Command attack visual effects are a VFX part of the course where you will see how to do the dash effect and also the slashes, which, which are very common. User experience deals with the sounds and some, some parts of, of UI that you can add in order to show how much life you have for the character. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you learn in this course. So I will also link to the chat. Okay. Let's go back to development. So what I need to create now, if we go back to our source material and let me add this, what we need to do now is the actual animation of the title and adding the sound. Four, three. So that's the animation that I want to create in my UMG title. Here is my title screen. So let's create the animation. Here you have the animation button plus animation. And in new animation, I will put um, anim fade in, fade out. Now I will click on the animation. And you will see now that my viewport changes a little bit. Now it says selected, anim, fade in, fade out. This is happening because everything that we do now inside it, it will be taken in consideration for the animation, but not exactly uh, the changes that we can do will not translate to the normal behavior of this text. So if we hide this text, then it will only happen in the animation. Right, so I want to modify all the text here. So let me select this vertical box. I'm going to change it into a variable just in case, and I'm going to assign it 
a name. Uh, and I believe I don't really need to change it into a variable because I won't access this um, panel through the graph. So yeah, it's not really needed. Okay, so let's rename it to vertical box title. And with this vertical box selected, go to animations, click on your animation, make sure that you are inside the animation. And now let's add a track. If you selected the title, well, the vertical box, you will have it at the top. And now with the title, I can add a track, a track and in the track, I'll add render opacity. Now in the render opacity, let me change it to, uh, no, it's, it's good. One is fine. And at the end, I will put, uh, not exactly at the end, but after one second, I'll create another key. If we press play, nothing is happening, but I want a fade in and a fade out. So at the middle, I will change this render opacity to 0, 0.0, or just 0, 0 would work also. And now if we scrub the timeline, you can see that it's fading out, fading in and fading out. So let's press play, and there it is, our animation inside UMG. Now again, if I'm here, but I deselect the animation, you will see that my title returns to the normal opacity. So that was what I was trying to convey to you that the, it's important to know if you have an animation selected or not. Yeah, and it, you can deselect the animation by just clicking on an empty space here. Right, so we have the animation, so I want it to play it. Okay, and it should be very simple. Let's go to the graph. And here I will create a custom event called play. Fade in, out. Well, play fade in and out. Inside of it, I will get my animation and I will find it here under variables. Animations, let me drag and drop it, get it. And from here, I'll put play animation and I'm going to connect it and in the animation oh and by the way if the notes are auto rearranging is because I have this plugin called blueprint assist and I put I will put never auto format okay so if I want to play the animation this node already does it for me but I want to select how how fast do I want to play the animation, right? Because I don't actually want it to be this speed. What do I mean by this? Is that for me right now, the animation is too slow. Oh, I created a new animation. Let me delete it. Yeah, right now it's too slow for me. So I can use the playback speed. Playback speed is a value that you can modify and the fastest way to just understand it is normal playback speed, speed is one. If I wanted to play, to play twice as fast, this will be two. If I needed to play four times as fast, this will be four. If I wanted half the speed, this will be 0 0.5 but sometimes it's easier to determine a time by just telling it oh i want it to last one second i want it to last two seconds or maybe i want it to last 0 0.1 seconds so what i will do is that translation i will create a variable that it will be called it's a float type of variable so it's a decimal number and this will be called 
animation length in seconds. And the math is actually pretty simple. Let me drag and drop my animation length in seconds. So because if I want it twice as fast would be 0 0.5 seconds, you will see that by doing a rule of three, it's actually very associated with the playback speed. So what do I mean by this? Is that let me do the, the, the math. I have it here. Okay, perfect. If it's one second, the playback speed right now, the length of the playback speed, the designer, the animation lasts one second. So, Pretty easy, one second is one second. But if it is um, the total, um, how do I put it? Okay, so <laughs> one second of each one <laughs> lasts one second. So it this means that, oh, if I want it to last two seconds, I just need to divide this. So divide it, this will give me 0 0.5. And this should be multiplied by, by one, by this one. So 0 0.5 should be the playback speed value that I need for it to last two seconds. So yeah, it's a little bit of math, one of the simpler math in game development. So we just need to divide. And this should be one. So one divided by the length in set seconds that I want. Remem remember, if I put a two here, this will be 0 0.5. So it, it actually matches. And we can now determine which length do I want. And I will want maybe 0 0.1. Just so it's a lot faster, right? Okay, so with this, I have an event that plays an animation at the speed that I want. So let's just play it for now. I'll just make it loop forever, so 0. And in the construct, I will play fade in and out. And let me delete that tick because I don't really need it. Okay, so when this title screen gets created, it will start playing this fade in and out. So let's test it out. Here it is. Yeah, so it is working. It is fast enough as it is in the in the title screen, but you will see that there are there, there is a random pattern. Or so we need to recreate that type of random pattern. So that pattern, um, the way we can recreate it, is actually not that hard. First, we need to wait between the intervals. So. I cannot use this number of loops to play, sadly. So I will put a one here. I only want this to play once. In the event construct, I will create a timer. Let me delete this node. And in the construct, I will set a timer by event because I want this event to get played. So the way I can connect it is like this, but I don't really like long strings or well, long wires. So I'll just put create event. And inside create event, I will select my 
play fade in and out. Perfect. So we need time before this timer um, gets finishes. Excuse me. Before this timer finishes and executes my play fade in and out. So I will want to create. I mean, if I just put here 0 0.1, it will be the same. Like every 0 0.1 seconds, it will play this animation. And if I put it looping, I will get the same result. But because I want it to be a little bit more random, what I'm going to do is from the time I'm going to drag and drop a node called random float in range. A random floating range, in the minimum value, I'm going to promote it to a variable, minimum um, time, and in maximum time, again, I'll promote it to a variable and call it maximum time. And this will be maybe time to wait. It's a good idea to have longer names if it is easier to under understand later. What exactly does this variable do? In time to wait is the minimum time that it can randomize this value to. So I will put in this minimum time because maybe I can, I, I want it to be fast sometimes. Uh, let me compile so I can modify this default value. This will be 0 0.05. Time to wait. 0 0.05 and the max time to wait will be 0 0.8 and you can tweak it around to your liking right so let me organize the notes and there they go now this is going to play the actual animation once because nothing is telling it to loop it and i only want to loop the animation after it has finished. Otherwise, it can be mid animation and it will look very weird. So, what I'm going to do with the animation, you can bind it and you can bind to the animation finish. This is a way to know when does the animation has finished. Because right now it could be 0 0.1 second, but this value can change. So again, I'll create an event here. And this event will be triggered whenever this animation finishes. So let's create a matching event. And this event, let's call it unfinished. Unfinished anim paid. Fade in and out. And inside it, I'm going to call the code to wait again a random time. Right? So animation finished and in fade in and out. Here it is. And because it's not a really good idea to just connect it like this. Even though this is exactly what I want, what I'm going to do is disconnect this node from everything else, and I will create an event here. And I can't do it like that, so let's right click it again, create event without dragging it from here. And that's not what I needed, it was custom event, this one. Let's call it repeat animation at different times and let's connect it like this and the event construct will call that repeat an animation at different times and also unfinished and in fade in fade out will also call called repeat animation at different times. This makes it so 
whenever I need to add something here, everywhere else it will get updated because this is calling this event and this node is also calling this event. Now with this, let's press, well, let's say compile and then press play. You will have the flashing of the title at random times. And we're almost done. You can also play around with how long do you want that animation to, to last. For example, here I also want it to be zero. Just so it takes a little bit longer to appear. We can play with it, with that and the curves. And the last thing that I need to do is to add the sound because this trailer has the sound. The sound the sound of the click of a Geiger counter. Five, four. Yeah, that sound. I got that sound here from Free Sounds. Geiger uh, counter. If you have an account, you can register for free. I just downloaded it. And then it's a long file. So I just needed one click or two or three. So using this free also software called Audacity, what I did was just drag and drop my my Geiger sound, which I should have here. And this is the whole file. And what I did was, well, increase this a little bit so I can see it better. Zoom in. You can also use this tool to zoom in or out. Now, I don't know how to zoom out. I'll just use shift, shift or control. Oh, it was control, control to zoom in and out. Okay, so with each one of these peaks, oh, come on. let me just go to the start. Okay, let's say I wanted this. Click. I can just select it. I can just go to File, Export, Export Selected Audio, and export it to a WAV, WAB or Wave. Is the the a good format for Unreal to read it. So I already have done it for the three clicks for the first three clicks. And I imported it to Unreal. So I have them here in this folder. I have the three clicks. Let's go back to Unreal. Let's go to the content drawer. And I can just drag and drop the assets that we created in Audacity. And I'm going to close it. With the assets imported, what I can do is select them, right click, create a single queue, and this queue will be called Sound Queue Geiger Counter Click. Let's open it, and inside it, it has already created this code for me, which it was exactly what I needed a random way of playing these clicks. If I press play Q, you will see what's happened. Perfect. The volume multiplier, I'll put it at 0 0.2 because I couldn't hear it at first, like that clearly. But from here, this sound Q will already be done. So let's just close it, go to the title screen. I don't need to select the animation actually. So we can deselect it. And in the graph, when is it that it fades and appears is here in the plate fading and out. 
So I'm going to play animation the, the audio here. So let's play it. Play a 2D sound because it's a type of menu sound that you don't really want to add some attenuation or spatialization. Like you don't want to hear this in the in the world. You just want to hear it as a normal UI sound. So play sound. Let's select the Geiger counter click that we already created and we can click here in the arrow. Now we have it. I'm going to press F so we can <laughs> the plugin can auto organize it for me. And when I press save and compile and play, you now will have the title screen with the animation and also the sound. So that's pretty much it. You now know how to create a title screen and later on you can add some input so you can change uh, the, the UI, right? Because this can work as a title screen. You press enter and then um, you can go immediately to the main menu or immediately to a map. Yeah, that's pretty much it for now. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that if you saw the, the, the start of the stream, you will remember that that was not the only logo that I created or the only title screen that I created. I created, oh, no, not this one, this one. Which is the same, but if I press enter, it actually becomes a meme. And this Barbie logo has some flashes here, some flares that can appear randomly at three points. So yeah, it's it's a it's a good ad addition, but it is using the same principles as the title screen that we just created. But if you would like to see the creation of this part, then yeah, give it some likes. Maybe if we got some, I don't know what would be a good number, five hundred likes, should be easy to get, right? If we get that, I can do another stream and show you how. Did I create this um, that title screen? Well, the, the whole title screen, which is here. I mean, in the there's a little bit more code, and there's an extra animation to change the title. And yeah, you also need to handle how to stop the title bling, which is also easy, don't worry. But yeah, give it some likes and we can, or well, I can know that there is interest to the, do a deep dive on this. So yeah, that will be it for this short stream. I just wanted to get, get it out of the way. Hopefully it was very useful to you. Let me see if there's some questions in the chat. If there aren't, then we can finish this stream and it finally is not a, <laughs> a, a three hour stream like it usually is where my throat gets completely destroyed. Uh, yeah. Pretty cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff in, in UMG. So if this is something that you like, let us know also in the comments. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.